My name is Kevin Walsh, and I'm an industry principal for transmission and distribution in Smart Grid. Today I'm going to talk about Smart Grid, what it really means. It has different definitions. Does it come with directions? What are the parts? I'm going to cover some of the newer parts of the Smart Grid. And what's important? And then once I get through that, I'm going to go through some of use cases. So you're going to see how some of our clients in trans transmission distribution are utilizing Pi as an infrastructure to support their projects. So when I get to the use cases, kind of like in this area, there's a lot to cover. So I may not cover in detail. So I'm around all day. We can set up one-to-one -on -one, one -on -one meetings and go and discuss in detail. So smart grid, what does it mean? Is it AMI, smart meters? Is it home energy management systems? Is it PMUs? Is it distributed generation? Is it microgrids? Is it smart cities? Is it some? Is it all? Is it none? And after today, you're going to know your acronyms. I like this quote because it really sums up what smart grid is. It's not really definable. It's kind of a vision. And it's about what the utility feels the need they need to do to modernize, modernize their grid. And it's multiple departments that come together to drive the smart grid vision of a utility. So what does smart grid really mean? It could probably be broken up into five, six words, but more reliable. So basically the lights stay on. More secure, both from a physical and a cyber security, more economic, so we want to squeeze more energy out of the fossil plants, we want to reduce losses on the line, and more efficient, and it's about losses in capacity generation, but with economics we want to adjust the tariffs to meet today's needs within the utility framework, and more environmentally friendly, so renewables, you're going to get wind, solar, hydro. Uh, less we want to reduce the carbon output from the utilities and more safe from an end customer perspective and a an, uh, utility um, employee perspective. So what are the key enablers to smart grid? We've got advanced communications either through cellular, RF technologies or power line carrier PLC. We're rolling out new technology on the sensing and measuring of the, uh, from the meter into the distribution part. We're adding advanced components such as smart meters, two-way communication, PMUs. We're driving advanced controls. We're driving it further down into the transmission and distribution grid. So now we're taking on the distribution space with controls. And all these components add up to being able to interface and help support the dis quick decisions operators need to make and outages situations to keep the lights on. So with these new components rolling out, there's two main byproducts of the smart grid. And of course, they're going to align with what OSI Soft does. The first one is wide area situational awareness. And the second one is data. All those new sensors and smart meters are all generating data. So you're going to have lots and lots of data. So what do we mean about situational awareness? Because of these new devices from smart meters and on up on the distribution side, we're understanding for the first time what's really happening down past the substations to the homes. So with this data set, we can start un understanding what's happening at the individual meters up to the pole transformers. And then we can st still aggregate the data up to the substations with dashboards to understand what's happening at all the components within the field. And then we can get a wider view through maps. This happens to be a Bing map, but now we can overlay the data on maps or GIS. And then with data, this happens to be a, a presentation given by Florida Power and Light, which has 4.2 million customers are rolling out the smart meters. So from a billing perspective, over the course of the years, with their mainframe system, they generated a terabyte of data for the, for the 4 million plus customers. And then when they did smart metering, they went from 1 terabyte to 300 terabytes of data just for billing. And then they started thinking about the smart grid, smart devices, uh, 
other data off the smart meter, and it just went up exponentially. So does it come with directions? Does smart grid come with directions? I kind of equate the smart grid and smart metering like Legos. You can basically build what you want. So in this case, with Legos, they built a motorcycle. They built a car with Legos, right? Even their own smartphone with Legos. And we can't leave out our superheroes, right? But smart grid, just like Legos, start out in pieces. With a smart metering, you have the meter, you have your data concentrator, you have your communications. And if you think of a smart grid, we're touching more parts, so it's a bigger pile of Legos that we need to piece together to come up with what we find value to both the utility and the end customer. They don't come with directions like Legos, which, which we wish it did. But smart grid and smart meter are a bunch of projects, and at the end of the day, you're going to have you'll be king of the castle with your smart grid program. Some of the parts in smart grid, more the advanced parts. There's a lot of moving parts within the smart grid. You have different, basically, contributors. You have the residential, commercial. You have storage. You have renewable energies coming in. Um, so all that needs to play nicely together. For examples, PMUs, phasor measurement units, are fairly prominent in the United States and rolling out. As an example, an X-ray on the left-hand side is compared, which would be your SCADA system at four-second samples, to your PMUs, which is an MRI, at sub-second view of the grid. So you just get a clearer picture and understanding what's happening. Example from a SCADA perspective on the left, and then more, this is a sub-second sampling to sub-second sampling. You get to see details um, of what's happening on a wide area of your grid, and PI plays a, a role within PMUs. Microgrids, it's uh, up and coming. We're actually partaking in a, a few microgrids, but the Department of Defense are rolling them out. But a lot of players, a lot of interaction between components, you need to monitor and visualize what's happening on the grid. Meters, Pi plays a role in metering. This is just a smart meter with its nameplate data and the information we're capturing off it. This is data link and you're able to view the data within its tariffs and profiles and trending. Condition-based monitoring, which was brought up earlier, so we're monitoring our critical assets in the field. This happens to be a web part display. Another web part display. This is monitoring a um, wind farm across the United States. Monitoring a solar field. And we, but at the end of the day, we want to see a wide area and understand what's happening throughout the smart grid ecosystem. So here is CoreSight with a nice overall dashboard. So what's important in a smart grid? There's one common thing that throughout the smart grid is about the data. There's a lot of data being generated, different frequencies, but when you put it all together, there's a lot of value at it, with it. So basically, the moral of the story is, is that you need a common infrastructure for your data set across your smart grid. If you don't, your projects are going to get a little weak and shaky. Then you're going to have to start supporting the project with extra staff. And what we don't want to do is start the project over, like this gentleman kicking, kicking it down and rebuilding. So the moral of the story is we want to understand that there's a common data infrastructure that's going to be used across your smart grid. And Pi is that infrastructure to support all your individual projects going forward. So basically, end-to-end -end vis visual visibility and monitoring. So I'm going to go through some use cases right now. I may run out of time. But the, uh, the, the PowerPoint's in your book, so I'll be around today, better half of tomorrow, if you want one-on-one -on -one conversations about a specific project that we've done. Some utility companies think smart metering is smart grid, so from meter to cash, but it's much more than that. When you provide smart metering with the operation size and you blend the data, you get a true picture of what's happening on your local grid. So what, there's a lot of ROI, return on investment, that we're looking for from a, from a metering rollout. But some utilities forget that there's a lot of operational value out of that, that same set of data used for billing. 
And so we want to make sure that we, we, we look at the full picture and the full value of what a meter brings and the meter data brings to a utility. So one of the use cases I'm going to speak on is Centrica, or better known as British Gas. They are the largest retailer of electricity and gas and services in the UK with 16 million meters. What's important to know is that they are a SAP or SAP shop and we integrate tightly with SAP from a meter to cash perspective. They are a happy EA customer. What does that mean? They're an enterprise customer so they can consume all the, the Pi software that they need. They are a pioneer in the smart metering rollout of, of uh, the UK. So they started years before the UK government mandated smart metering. For two main reasons they started early. One being that they wanted to experiment with smart metering and technology and make sure their back office is ready for when this rolls out. And two is that they wanted to help set the market with their direction on smart metering. So they're going to, they want to set the, the, uh, the market trend on smart metering in the UK. As of today, they've got 575,000 smart meters where we are collecting the data and sending it to SAP for billing. They're rolling out 8,000 new smart meters a week, and they have over 4 million tag server that's supporting their system today. They're projecting 2 million meters by the end of 2014, and they're running on the latest version of AMI at SAP, which is enhanced with package five, if you're familiar with it. Another utility, but this is a municipality in the United States, California. It's Sacramento Municipality Utility Department. It's about 525, uh, almost 600,000 smart meters that they've rolled out. And it's, you know, 2,000 employees, 900 square miles of service territory. The, SMUD is using Pi from an operational perspective for the smart metering data. They're not using it for meter to cash, but using it to focus on better improvements on the operation side. So how they're utilizing that data within Pi is that they've discovered that they've been oversizing transformers. So by right-sizing transformers, they're able to save about 5% out of their budget. And because they have better data on the equipment in the field, they're either delaying or canceling capital projects, which saves money to the utility. And because of that same data set from the smart meters, they're able to reduce what they have, what they call um, touch days. And that's where field linemen go out and work on the high transmission lines. But prior to that, it was all an estimation of the temperature and the conditions of the transmission lines. And because of having that data within the Pi environment, they're able to actually calculate the temperatures of the transmission lines and reduce the number of no-touch days, which increases productivity with their workforce. Excel Energy, Smart Grid City, another pioneering utility that utilized Pi in their Smart Grid pilot. Fairly large utility, 3.4 million electric customers. So this is the first time a utility experimented bringing smart meter data in with operational data and here we coined the operational data manager system. When they did this, it provided a, a seamless view of their, of their pilot footprint. Uh, it was based on time series data. Um, it really gave them the, the visualization and situational awareness they wanted out of the project. So basically the pilot was that they started collecting the data within the Pi system from four substations, the collecting from their operations, energy management, and bringing the data into one large Pi environment, Pi system environment. So within this Pi collective, we have substation information, operations, EMS, smart metering data. Basically collecting data, it's a million tag server environment. Uh, we're blending operational and metering data together to come up with this. So the key points were that we're able to collect down here on the left, individual pieces of equipment from smart metering to substation equipment. We can make relationships either physically or logically, and then we can start rolling them up on the line. And so the goal was to roll up the endpoint meter or the data 
up to the substation and start comparing substation information with the metering information from an aggregated perspective and netting those out will give you actual losses. Are, are these the losses that we are expecting? Is there something going on with the system? Not only on losses, but voltage information too. This is basically rolling up the data. So what, what came out of this, when they were able to view all that data set in one environment, they had voltage issues along their lines. And before monitoring the, uh, the meters slash substations, they weren't aware of it. They were just getting high voltage complaints or low voltage complaints. And so when they started rolling out the smart meters and started getting visual and monitoring capabilities, they were able to identify the voltage, work on the voltage, and minimize the voltage issues out in the field. And this had a direct correlation to the call center. You can see the call complaints are high on voltage issues, and as they rolled out the smart, the, the smart grid pro, uh, pilot program and fixed the issues in the field, their calls dropped to the call center on voltage complaints in that area. I was told I have five minutes left. I'm sure everybody is sad. There's a lot more use cases behind this, so I am, again, I want to emphasize that I will be here. If you want to talk about them individually, I will be here to support that. So the last use case I'll discuss on stage is uh, U UKPN, which is UK Power Network's uh, Low Carbon London project. So basically, it's a small area, high density, 8 million customers, and it's the London in the London proper area, very dense. So there is a government funded project called Low, uh, Low Carbon Network Fund, about a half a billion pounds that the government pushed out to the utilities to experiment on different type of smart grid programs. So UK Power Network took on the project of reducing carbon emissions within the city proper. So the project, had many different facets to it um, and different um, businesses responsible for different areas of the project. So Siemens, Logica, National Grid is the transmission company, uh, Internox, it's the demand response program uh, provider, uh, Flextricity, and EDF Energy with their customers. Again, with an aggressive 60% reduction of the CO2 levels uh, of the 1999 of 1990 levels by, by 2025. So basically, it comprised of multiple areas. Uh, renewables, they're putting a lot of wind farms in the North Atlantic seas. So how can we make uh, the tariffs represent, they have what they call wind twinning, which is let's drop the rates when the wind's blowing, and then let's increase the rates when it's not. So they wanna, they wanna impact customer behavior. They're experimenting with uh, distributed generation, which means residential solar. And I was the first one to raise my hand saying there's solar in London. I thought it rained all the time. Heat pumps and electric vehicles are gonna be big. Smart meter and demand side management programs. And then Pi is the system of record for all those different points of interest within the low carbon London projects. We're collecting electric vehicle, substation, smart metering, solar information. And this is being supported at a low carbon London learning lab out of a local university. So Pi is collecting information from the wind and the, and the uh, load profiles of the clients, the solar information on the houses, electric vehicles and heat pumps, smart meters, and demand side management, collecting within the Pi infrastructure so we can monitor, show results, sh and, and lessons learned from uh, use, uses patterns. So part two of the story is that UK Power Networks is presenting at our users conference in Paris in two weeks, and we're gonna see some end results of their pilot program. So there's two more use cases that I'm not able to speak about. This is University of California, San Diego, which is a micro, a living microgrid, one of the largest ones in the world today that we are very strategic component to it. In the last use case that I'm not able to present, it's the best one. <laughs> is Sempra, but their utility called San Diego Gas and Electric. And they're using Pi for their traditional T&D, generation T&D business, and it's one of the advanced utilities in the world from a smart grid perspective, and Pi is being utilized in all their smart grid projects. The slides are in your, 
the booklet that's in front of you, and if you want more details or explanation of what they're doing, I'll be floating around today. And thank you very much.